hello 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 and welcome home welcome back to my channel if you're new please make yourself feel comfortable you're safe places here um today's video is going to be we're starting um, a new series here it's called the bait is satan and is from john um bevere i think that's how you pronounce his name um i had a request from someone for me to read this so every monday i'm going to upload a video um i just did the introduction Sorry, my, my little notes here. I want to make sure I get everything organized there. Um, the prefix and the introduction, now we're starting in chapter one. Um, I am a little behind. We had a situation that happened here in El Paso. So this is very fitting, starting this after the um, mass shooting there at Walmart here in El Paso, Texas. And we lost 22 um, beautiful individuals from um, visiting from Mexico and also from uh, we lost a German too so we it's been a very um, learning experience we never thought it would happen in our home backyard so um, the reasoning of this book is learning to um, release the offense um, of entrapment of forgiveness meaning learning how to forgive and um, the growth of it. I was given this book to me as a gift before I even begin. I have no rights. This is not, I mean, it was given to me from my husband, but I have no rights to this book. Um, I'm just reading it for um, giving some insight that I've experienced or what I felt at the time when I was reading this. Like I stated, I received this as a gift from Ray and right after the accident. Are you wanting to come up? I have badness with me. We have rescued many, many animals. It was the furry dozen, but now we have two birds. So we have the call of the Hernandez Mafia. So I'm going to, sorry, this, this one. Come here. Let's get up here. So I'm putting Ginger on the Chase Lounge. She likes her chase lounge and then I'm going to pick up Mr. Badness, the little, I call him my little bean. He's just a fat little guy. Yeah, I sweet love him. He's our, he's a little rescue that he has only one little eye and um, yeah, you're just a lover, aren't you? Yes, he's the smallest of all the chihuahuas we have and he's just a fantastic dog. We love him so much. The littlest and the mightiest, meaning he takes, he has the loudest bark. Yes, yes. So, and today you're gonna sit here with me. Oh, I think that would be wonderful if you did. It's chapter one, and um, I'm not sure how far we will go today, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Our response to an offense determines our future. The beta Satan has changed our lives. In our ministry, we have watched the video at least 20 times and read the book over and over. Our ministry has used the book and video teachings to transform our lives as well as our lives of many others. The message is powerful and timely. This came from SQ Connecticut. Chapter 1. Me Offended? It is impossible that no offense should come from Luke chapter 17 verse 1 as I travel across the United States ministry I have been able to observe one of the enemy's most deadly and deceptive traps it imprisons countless Christians several relationships and widens the existing branches between us it is the trap of offense many are humbled to function properly in their calling because of the wounds and the hurt that offends offense that has caused in our lives. They have handicapped and hindered from fulfilling their full potential. Most often it is the fellow the believer who has hurt them that caused the offense to feel like a portray, portrayal. In Palms 55 verse 12 through 14 David states, 
For it's not the enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it the one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, that I could hide from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throne. There are those whom we sit with and sing along a side, or perhaps it is one who is delivering the sermon. We spend holidays, attend social functions, and share offices with them, or perhaps it's closer. We grow up with, confined in, and sleep next to them. The closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. You find the greatest hatred among people who were once close. Attorneys will tell you the most vicious case are in divorce courts. The American media constantly reports murders in homes by desperate family members. The home meant to be a shelter, a protection, provision, and the growth where we learn to give and receive love is often the very root of our own pain. History shows the bloodiest wars are civil against brother against brother, son against father, and father against son. The possibility for offense are as endless as the list of relationships, no matter how complex or simple. This truth remains only those who care about can hurt you. You expect more from them. After all, you've given more of yourself to them. The higher expectations and the greater the fall. Selfishness reigns in our society. Men and women today look out for themselves to the neglect and hurt of those around them. This should not surprise us. The Bible is very clear that in the last days, men will be the lovers of themselves. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. We expect in this in unbelievers, but Paul was not referring to those outside the church. He was talking about those within it. Many are wooden, wooden, hurt, and bitter. They are offended, but they do not realize that they have fallen into Satan's trap. It's not your fault. Jesus made it very clear that it is impossible to live in this world and not have the opportunity to become offended. Yet most believers are shocked, bewildered, and amazed when it happens. We believe we are the only ones who have been wrong. This response leaves us vulnerable to a root of bitterness. Therefore, we must be prepared and aim for offense because our response determines our future. The deceptive trap. The Greek word for offend in Luke chapter 17 verse 1 comes from the word, I'm going to spell it out, S-K-A-N-D-A-L-O-N. This word originally refers to the part of the trap to which the bait is was attached. Hence the word sensifies laying a trap in someone's way. In the New Testament, it often describes an entrapment used by the enemy. Offense is a tool of the devils to bring people into captivity. Paul instructs young Timothy. And a servant of the Lord must not, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patience, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them 
repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare, the entrapment of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do this will. Second Tim two Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty four to twenty six. Those who are in quarrels or opposition fall into a trap and are held prisoners to do the devil's will. Even more alarming, they're unaware of their uh, captivity. Like a prologue, they must come to themselves by awakening to the truth condition. They do not realize that they are spewing out bitter water rather than pure. When a person is deceived, he believes he has the right, even though he is not. No matter what the scenario is, we all can divide all offended people into two major categories. Number one, those who have been treated unjustly. And number two, those believe that they have been treated unjustly. Number one, again, those who have been treated unjustly, or number two, those who believe they have been treated unjustly. People in the second category believe with all of their hearts that they have been wrong. Often their con conclusions are drawn from incorrect in information, or their information is accurate but their conclusion is distorted either way they hurt and their understanding is darkened they judge by assumption appearance and hearsay i apologize right back So on what there's, what I'm understanding is often the conclusions that are drawn from incorrect information or inaccurate information on their information is, on their information is accurate, but their conclusion is destroyed. Either way, they hurt and their understanding is darkened. They judge by assumption appearance and hearsay. I know I have been very very guilty of doing this um, many many of times and um, we're all have done this and it's learning to not to be judgmental and try to ask questions and take the emotion out of it. The heart the next part of this is the heart's true condition. One way the enemy keeps a person in a offended state is to keep the offense hidden, clothed with pride. Pride will keep you from admitting your true condition. Once, in the, once I was severely hurt by a couple of ministers. People would say, I can't believe they did this to you? Aren't you hurt? I would quickly respond, no, I'm fine. Nope, not hurt. I knew it was wrong to be offended, so I denied and repressed it. I convinced myself I was not, but in reality, I was. Pride masked the true condition of my heart. Pride keeps you from dealing with truth. It distorts your vision. You never change when you think everything is fine. Pride hardens your heart and dims the eyes of your understanding. It keeps you from change of heart. That sets you free. See 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 through 26. 
pride causes you to view yourself as a victim. Your attitude becomes, I was mistreated and misjudged, therefore I am justified for my behavior. Because you believe you are innocent and falsely accused, you hold back forgiveness. Through your true heart condition, it's hidden from you. It is not hidden from God. Just because you're mistreated, you do not have the permission to hold on to an offense. Two wrongs don't make a right. The cure. I apologize. The cure. In the book of Revelations, Jesus addressed the church of by first telling them how they saw themselves rich, wealthy, and having needs of nothing. Then by exposing their true conditions, wrenched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. It's in Revelations 3, chapter 14 through 20. They have mistaken their financial strength for spiritual strength. Pride hid their true condition. Many are this way today. They do not see the true condition of their hearts just as I was unable to see the resentment I carried toward those ministers. I had convinced myself I was not hurt. Jesus told them how to get out of their deception by God's gold and see their true conditions. By God's gold? Jesus' first instructions for breaking free from deception was to buy gold from me, gold refined in the fire. Revelation, Revelations 3, chapter, verse 18. Refined gold is soft and pliable, free from corrosion or other substance. It is the gold that is mixed with other metals as copper, iron, nickel, and so on. It becomes hard, less pliable, and more corrosive. This mixture is called an, an alloy. The higher the percentage of the foreign metals, it's harder for the gold to become conversely. The lower the percentage of alloy is softer and more flexible. Immediately, we see the peril. A pure heart is like pure gold, soft, tender, and peril. In Hebrews 3, chapter 13, Hebrews 3, chapter 13 states, or chapter 3, 13, verse 13. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 13, I apologize, states that hearts are hardened through the deceitfulness Decipherness of sin. If we do not deal with an offense, it will produce more fruit of sin, such as bitterness, anger, and resentment. This added substance hardens our hearts just as alloys harden gold. This reduces and removes tenderness, cre creating a loss of sensitivity. We are hindered in our our ability to hear God's voice, our accuracy to see the darkened. This is a perfect setting for deception. The first step in refining gold is grinding it into powder and mixing it with a substance called flux. Then the mixture is placed in the furnace and melted by the intense heat. The alloys and the impurities are drawn to the flux to raise the surface. The gold, which is heavier, remains at the bottom. Impurities, or the dross, such as copper, iron, zinc, combined with the flux, is then removed and yielding the pure metal. Now look at what God says. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10 and again in this you gently rejoice through now for a little while if you need it need be you have been grieved by various trials 
and that the genuine sling of faith be much more precious gold than Paris. Through it, it is tested by fire, may be founded in the praise of honor and the glory of the revolution, revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. God refines with afflictions, trials, and tribulations, the heat of which separates impurities such as unforgiveness, strife, and bitterness, anger, envy, and so forth from the characters of God in our lives. Sin easily hire, hides where there is no heat of trials and affliction. In time of prosperity and success, even a wicked man will seem kind and generous under the heat of trials, however the purity surface. There was a time in my life when I went through intense trials such as I've never faced before. I became rude and harsh and those closest to me. My family and friends began to avoid me. I cried out to the Lord, where is all of this anger coming from? It wasn't here before. God responded. Son, it is when you, when they li liquefied gold in fire and that the impurities showed up. Then, he then asked a question that changed my life. Can you See the impurities and gold before it was put in the fire? No, I answered. But that doesn't mean they weren't there, he said. When the fire of trials hit you, these impurities surface. Through hidden to you, they were always visible to me. So now you have a choice that will determine your future. You can remain angry, blaming your wife, your friends, your pastor, and the people at work with. Or you can see the dross of the sin for what it is and repent. Receive forgiveness and I will take my ladle and remove these impurities from your life. See your true condition. Jesus said our ability to see correct, correctly is another key of being free from deception. Often when we are offended we see ourselves as victims and blame those who have hurt us. We, jeopardize, we justify our bitterness, our unforgivenessness, our anger, our envy and resentment as they suffer, surface. Sometimes we even resent those who remind us of others who have hurt us. For this reason, Jesus counseled, anoint your eyes with eye slave that you may see. See what? Your true condition. That's the only way we can be zealous and repent. As Jesus commands next, you will only repent when you stop blaming other people. When we blame others and defend our own position, we are blind. We struggle to remove the speck out of our brother's eye while there are logs in ours. It is revelation the truth that brings freedom to us. When the Spirit of God shows us our sin, he always does it in such a way that it seems separate from us. This brings convention, not condemnation. It is my prayer that you read this book, God's Word, will enlighten the eyes of your understanding that you will see your true condition 
and become free from any offense you are hoarding. Don't let pride keep you from seeing and repenting. Next week will be chapter two. Um, I'm going to be very, very honest. Um, I had fallen in to the trapment of offense. Um, family, friends, um, ex-husband, husband, um, parents, and I had to strangers and 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 reading that again it reminded me there are certain people who remind me of things that happened in my past so I'm angry at them they're thinking why are you angry with me I've not done anything and it's like there's a, a an offense that I've not forgiven somebody you might say but have you truly forgiven them and the next step I can only stress is forgive yourself for being angry. Release that. Don't let the devil work through that. Um, forgiveness is the greatest gift I can ever receive. And forgiveness is the, the, the greatest gift you can ever give. Until next week. Be good to yourself, be good to others, for we do not know what part of the journey they're on. And again, thank you for your patience, and um, have a beautiful day. I love you, and welcome home. Bye.